All right. Good morning. Let's, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> it's been two weeks this time. Uh, since the last coding stream. Uh, that's right. Last week, there were some issues with uh, the thing that I use for music for the streams. So, uh, I, um, I have done a little bit on the project. Uh, let's see, do I have, the, um, that's what do I want here. Let's bring this down. Bring AWS out so I can go authenticate there we go um i think i have an open pull request with some of the there we go two weeks ago yes so this is what uh we had started working on uh several weeks ago kind of in a separate test project and then starting to bring it into the actual proper glowing telegram project um two weeks ago i guess i'm just going over and uh signing in signing into aws and you don't need to see all of my different user accounts so i'm just doing that on a separate screen here authenticator Definitely don't need to see that either. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got it right this time. Okay. So, uh, the news though, in the intermediate time, I have been chipping away at doing some debugging on kind of our first proper. Um, AWS batch job. Uh, so we've been working on boop, boop, boop. Uh, this video ingester is what I just ended up calling it. I recall that um, where we left off at the end of the last stream was dealing with some complaints from Rust about things um and so this went through a few iterations um the first working ish like compiled <laughs> compilable version of this um i still had i had it all just in in main and what i had done these issue was around we essentially needed to copy the inputs because we wanted to like to separate threads, I guess, effectively, separate um, concurrent processing steps. And um, so what I ended up doing was I just create separate scopes within the function and then make copies of the inputs in those scopes so they could reuse the same name. So I didn't have to make like file path one to file path two within the scope, you know, within a, a block scope I could redefine temp file path right like that and then spawn right within that scope and then have the scope return the handle to join on a join handle and then I ended up extracting that into functions right so now we have do audio extraction task and so this is effectively the same thing because it introduces the scope where we have copies of things um, although the copying is kind of more handled by calling the function rather than um, having to make explicit uh, while we're cloning here. So we're cloning when we're packaging what we're passing to the function. Uh, and then, you know, all the rest of the code is basically the same. I recall there being some issues and some confusion. Um, I recall one thing being I had an error in uh, where I was parsing the arguments. So, um, 
for whatever reason the input key is our is the third element of args uh, is where it, what it turned out and it was somewhat confusing because um, because this process and let's go pull up the Pulumi code while we're at it this all needs to be uh, cleaned up refactored um, but the the ECS task that is run to, to run the container that this code is in has permission to get objects from S3 um, in one place and put it in another place. And so I was getting this error about not being able to list objects in the bucket. And uh, that was confusing to me because nothing in here is listing things from buckets. But uh, I, I feel like this is something I've run into before, but I didn't remember. Uh, which is that if you try to get an object from a bucket for the purpose, like this, this is a security practice, right? If the thing requesting shouldn't have permission to enumerate something like to list something, then you really shouldn't allow it to know whether or not a thing exists inside the thing, because you could just like guess and ask, Hey, does this exist? So you have to pretend like the caller um, doesn't have permission to get the thing effectively. I think that's the idea of why it's like that. But essentially what it does is it says, okay, well, the thing doesn't exist. I would give back a 404 type error, right? Not found. But the caller doesn't have permission to list the bucket. So instead I'll return a 403 forbidden type error. Uh, so anyway, that was confusing for a few minutes uh, until I did some Googling and realized, oh yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so this this actually works now uh, after, again, some debugging. Uh, what I ended up doing on the Pulumi side of things, right? So we have, I did essentially port over the TypeScript that, uh, Pulumi um, code, infrastructure as code that we done in the, uh, uh, the test project into Python, um, I did end up needing to, um, so I, I decided at some point in there, I, I think this was maybe not on stream, that I was going to try to use more of this AWS native package from Pulumi that uses the uh, cloud control um, API. Pulumi, th this module from Pulumi uses the native AWS provided API to provision resources, but uh, some things are not quite ready. It is a preview. Um, and so there's some things where, okay, well, that doesn't work. Like, it seems like defining a table um, is is broken. So I, end, I ended up using just the normal Lumi AWS module for that. Uh, and I think there are one or two other things. I ended up also giving up on the idea for now of trying to do the Docker build um, for the image. Oh, hey, Alistair. Yeah, uh, I, I like my keyboard too. It's, it's I've had this since, um, what, December? And uh, it's, it's, it's starting to become more natural. Um, I think just the ergonomics of it itself um, wouldn't be a big deal, but I also decided to switch to Colmac. So we got QWFPB, uh, ARSTG instead of QWERTY. Uh, and so that has been a real challenge to uh, get used to, especially because like I have a laptop that I've not switched to Colmac. So uh, sometimes it takes some time to, uh, you know, <laughs> get the, uh, the, the interface between my brain and my fingers, the keyboard all aligned. And how are you doing, Alistair? Thanks for dropping by. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting better though. Uh, sometimes I get in a thing where it's like, I want to type something, I just keep on pressing the wrong key for a while. Um, I also, honestly, what I should have done is getting, uh, uh, is, is do more like ty actual dedicated typing practice, but I just can't seem to find the, the willpower to do that. Uh, you're good, about to head out so, with the whole family getting haircuts soon? Nice. All right. Seems like a 
that, that definitely feels like a, a Sunday morning activity, yeah? I don't know why. Ah, uh, uh, right, so what I ended up doing instead uh, is just doing the Docker, um, all the Docker work here. Yeah, there's nothing secret there. Okay, there's an account ID, that's not, that's not secret. So just, you know, using uh, AWS ECR to, uh, to log in and then uh, do a Docker build and just do this all by hand rather than um, trying to get Pulumi to do it, which we did have in the TypeScript version, but just um, maybe I could get to work with more effort, but I think I might go a different approach where I use GitHub Actions to do the builds. Alistair says, saw you were live though. I wanted to come uh, uh, come at hang beforehand. Don't know much about coding except in Python. Well, here's some Python. Um, most of the work on this project is in Rust uh, and then the front end is TypeScript, but uh, Brainless uh, really wanted to see some Python. So when I started to pull in this AWS infrastructure as code stuff, uh, into the project that it said that I would do Python as well. So now we have three languages, uh, because why not? <laughs> uh, all right, and here's where we're setting up like all of our AWS batch uh, compute resources, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, environment, uh, a job queue, uh, permissions, more permissions, so the the container execution role is the permissions for the whole container. And then the task role is the permissions for the thing that's running inside of the container. Um, that can be important in some cases. And then here's where we're actually defining, essentially think like what you would do with Docker Compose where you're defining all the environment variables. So this is um, ECS kind of uh, container properties. So input bucket, output bucket, keyframes, audio prefix, DynamoDB. So the, the goal with all of this is to essentially make a job so that I can upload my raw VODs that are on disk right now uh, and then drop them in S3, which I already have like a command line script that does that. Uh, and so we have So yeah, all of these video files, right? Um, all of these, except for the ones from today are already in S3, but uh, typically what, I, what I'm doing today is archiving them in S3 has nothing to do with my video processing pipeline. That's just kind of as a backup. Uh, so I don't have to keep them. Like I only have so much disk space. <laughs> I only have, you know, I don't know. Um, uh, well, we, we have 3.2 terabytes of video and do I want to open that? It's probably fine. Um, yeah, so I have 362 gigabytes free on this uh, pair of disks that are striped together. Uh, so I do eventually delete those videos and I just archive them into S3 if I ever want them again. Um, but when I'm doing currently as part of my video processing pipeline is I have my program glowing telegram uh, and which is what, what I've been working on for the last 10 months um, nine months ten months whatever it is and so what I'll do is I'll go find the local recording uh, video files uh, auto import them uh, I guess you don't have that button if things are already loaded, but, uh, oh, there it is, scan for clips. So you click that, it loads this in, and then you go over to, uh, like the audio tab and you do silence detection, um, and you do transcription and I guess the question is going to be, um, so the video clips part where we're getting the metadata of the video files, we're doing now in this new process. So, so right, so the overall, the idea is that instead of having to manually like kick off those jobs, 
Like, I want to do those things immediately, like once I have the video files. Um, and I want to just kind of transition that work into AWS. And the goal will be to eventually update the Glowing Telegram application to pull this data out of AWS, right? So like what, what we have here. So here's the, the S3 bucket where all the video files are going. So here's like um, from the 23rd, so last Monday. There's all the video files there. And there's not a ton of data here, right? So there's, I don't think I'm putting much in the way of metadata, just content type. Okay, okay sure, that's not, that's a very generic content type. Um, but then in, uh, boop, boop, we have our Docker image in ECR. Then in AWS batch, we can see the job that has run. There we go. So all of these jobs were triggered automatically by these objects being uploaded into S3, right? So I upload the video files in S3, and this bucket is configured by Pulumi to uh, trigger events on Amazon event bridge. And then in event bridge, we are, uh, set up. We will just refer to the code, right? So oop, we have permissions. Here we go. Rules, event rules, right? So this is, uh, saying, Hey, if an object is created in our bucket, then go ahead and trigger an AWS batch job. Uh, with this job definition, and then here's how you transform the uh, the the key of the object from the event into the parameters passed to the, that AWS batch job. All right. So back in batch, if we look at one of these runs, we should be able to see here were the parameters, and the parameter is just the S3 key where the file was uploaded. Uh, and so this job took, uh, do we have a count of how long it took? It started, so 14 minutes, which for what it does seems like a long time, but also this has very little CPU because, because when I set this up, um, for the container definition, I just said half of the CPU and only a gig of memory. So what's wild is that it's actually able to you know, process these multi gigabyte video files uh, with only a gig of memory um, because we're just streaming the data through FFmpeg to do the work. Uh, and that works, but could be faster. Like, I suspect there, are, and, and some performance analysis is something we could definitely could do to be like trying different sizes here and seeing how that affects the runtime. Because it's likely we could, you know, increase this up to like 10x or something and maybe it would take a tenth of the time or even better potentially um but we won't know until we start adjusting these values and kind of um charting that uh, in fact let me put that on my list of things that we should definitely look at doing is um earth earth analysis on uh shops this uh, so this part we did uh, I guess let's let's take a look at the end result right so we have an output bucket everything is signed out because it's been a while since I looked at this in the output bucket bucket I have prefixes for um, where the audio goes so that the end result of this is that it says type is in MKB. That's just because it reuses the same source file name. Uh, but you can see these are only like 30 megabytes because these actually are uh, three something brainless 10 months. Brainless society just subscribed for 10 months. There is likely two scenarios. <laughs> I either subscribed or I did not. But you did. 10 times in a row. Uh, 
How's it going? Uh, Alistair may be here or may have already left to go see about those haircuts. But uh, yeah, so we have the audio files here. Um, what is the video form? Like, what is the output format of this is a question that one would think I would know the answer to. Uh, let's see if we look at the audio extraction task. We run FFmpeg on audio, which is coming from audio extraction extract. How am I? I'm doing all right. I woke up earlier than my alarm and uh, for once was not like I was actually early <laughs> for when I normally start the stream. I just figured, you know, I'm just sitting here. Uh, not wanting to really get started on anything without starting the stream. So here we are. Uh, yeah, so we're outputting just the simple WAV file. You're on phone Wi-Fi, really bad signal. Oh no. Why? I, I take it that's not the normal situation. Usually when I'm watching a stream on my phone, it's because I'm in transit to an appointment or from. Uh, let's see, okay, right, so we have the audio. Uh, so we have, you know, a, a few megabytes, uh, but it's much more manageable than dealing with these, uh, you know, the video files themselves are like six gigs. Right, so much more manageable to deal, to deal with this. Most of the processing that you know we're doing, going to be doing, uh, is just for the audio, right? We're gonna be looking at uh, silence detection and uh, speech to text transcription. Uh, and it's just gonna be easier to deal with a few audio files rather than the whole video files. You're at your apartment, but as I've been staying back home, I stopped paying for internet here. Okay. You get some some Wi-Fi, some some poor Wi-Fi that you were using instead. And we have the keyframes. Um, so I only have these four days because this is this is the point where. Uh, I had been waiting several streams to do more uploads to S3 because I wanted this, script, this job in place to process it. So we got four streams worth of stuff in here. And then for each video file, we have PNGs. Uh, 289. Hmm. I mean, they're only like 15K, 30K. Uh, can we open one of these? Oh, that that saves okay well I guess I'll save it and open it oh okay am I gonna regret open Krita uh, on this if you were younger you'd be boot boosting Cali but man okay so here is what one of those keyframes looks like so you have a pretty low res but this this is the idea right is that um, by, ah, there we go, I just scroll, right? So the actual idea is that in, in a future UI, I'll be able to look at a timeline and this is kind of the scale at which I would be looking at these thumbnails to be able to see like what's going on in the video on like a timeline. So th this is kind of the desired state. So we don't need, you know, this, this kind of resolution is fine. Look, you can even tell it, tell that this says previously and maybe stream initializing. So that's, that's pretty good. All right. So that's two of the three outputs from the job. The third output is that we put everything in DynamoDB from the um, scanning of metadata of the video files. So we have, uh, um, did I say S3? DynamoDB, um, this output, right? So based on the input key, which we are, we're, we're the, the archive stays here, right? 
this is an input bucket, but it's not a, it's not like a, a staging bucket or a transitory thing. Like this is where we're archi archiving video. Um, so this stays around. Eventually these video files end up being in um, Glacier. Like if you look at the oldest ones here, Glacier Flexible Retrieval. So object is stored in Glacier. In order to access it, you must first restore it. I've not done that yet, but I could click this button and eventually we'd be able to access this file. And that's how I want it because you pay a lot, a lot less for storage in Glacier. And it's still possible to kind of with delay, transparently access those files. Um, so the S3 key from the input bucket becomes the key in our DynamoDB table. And if I look at one of these uh, items, here's the key. And then audio is just the path, the key and the output bucket of where the audio is stored. This happens to align with the, the name, right? So it's just audio slash and then this part. It doesn't always have to be like that. Uh, which is why I want to store these these values rather than just assume. Uh, and then we have keyframes. So same sort of idea. There is a common scheme for the names of the the frames, sort of. They're based on the, the frame numbers from the video that uh, FFmpeg is doing for us. And so we have an array of keys for all the keyframes in order. And then we have an object called metadata, and it has the things that we're getting from FF Pro. Right, so we got bitrate, duration, uh, file name is not super helpful. That's just the temp name um, in our uh, batch job. Uh, the name of the format of the video file, the number of streams. So we have a video stream and four audio streams in the uh, initial things. I don't know what probe score is. We have size here, tags. Uh, and then we have stream, so this will be like, here's the video stream. Uh, 60 frames a second. Uh, we should be able to see, yeah. So this is uh, 2560 by 1440. Uh, is how I record all of the, all the video. <laughs> so all this information that we're capturing from FF, um, FF Probe then gets turned into, uh, this nested object structure in, uh, in DynamoDB for record. Okay. So that, this is what I wanted. Um, so what do we do next? Well, I think there's a few different things we could be doing. Uh, Brainless says, I was playing Oni yesterday, the frosty asteroid, either it's more difficult or a year away from it was worse than expected to your skills. I mean, maybe both, maybe a little rusty and a little bit more challenging. I don't know. I I don't think I think I've seen a couple of videos about a, a frosty asteroid, but I've not really I don't really know a lot about it. I have to get back to oxygen unoccluded at some point. So we have this pull request, um, and this is basically the work. It's the last DLC. Let's see, that that makes sense. I have, I have not purchased that. Um, we got many warnings from uh, Clippy Check that probably should look at at some point. But yeah, so we have much stuff. Thanks, Brainless, for the. Uh, I've just copied the Docker file with some some modifications. Um, wait, wait, wait. If I'm if I'm copying the Docker file into Video Ingester, that's not what I've been doing though. Hold on. I don't think I've been using that Docker file. I think I've just still been using the top level one. Let's see what what is the Docker command that I've been running? Docker build. Oh, no, I have been using that one. Okay, so why would I have service name as a, a variable? Yeah. Bye-bye. Uh, service name. 
I decided that I, I did want to have specific Docker files for these things because I do want to be able to like have different dependencies um, for different things. Like this job specifically needs FFmpeg. It doesn't need OpenAI Whisper. Um, so now this can just be video and gesture. Mm -hmm. Last place that's referred to. Okay, so that can go away. All right, simpler. All right, that gets us kind of caught up on uh, the things that have happened since the last stream, and it only took me half an hour. Okay, so what's next? Uh, let me check my notes. So we did this. Let's see, how do I, okay, there we go. So, um, I did want to make a Lambda function that would call the Switch API for me. I think that is an interesting thing. And there's some, some stuff that I have been playing around with that will get more complicated, especially if we start thinking about like, how does it work in a scenario in which there are um, the, it becomes multi-tenant, right? So that, that that's not just the application for me, but potentially for others. So how do we like segregate Twitch credentials and OAuth tokens and those sorts of things? So I do want to do that. I wonder though, if it's not going to make more sense to continue working on this pipeline of essentially moving the things that we were doing locally if the files are in are in AWS in S3, and the output audio file is in is in S3, um, if we want to continue working on having the rest of the processing pipeline, right? So these other bits where we're doing uh, transcription, silence detection, that those should be there too. Um, that be begins to get a little bit more interesting because these are things where we want to likely, um, the, the stuff we've done so far has been per video file. Um, I guess potentially the silence detection, we could also um, do in this batch job as well. Thinking about the fact that, um, so, Take a different tack of explaining what I'm thinking about here, right? So for the transcription, the context, the continued context of the transcription process is really important. Like if we have, if there's a three hour video file, what I'm doing today is I'm taking those 20 minute segments and I'm doing transcription on each 20 minute segment and I'm not sharing context um, between those segments. And that can be a problem. Um, because like potentially it's going to pick out words and context and things at the beginning. And then um, uh, if it, if it figures out a word in the context of the beginning, like I'm talking about cues, like I could be talking about Amazon cues. Uh, Amazon Q is now a service. But also I could be talking about a queue, like, you know, you put things in, you take things out, uh, uh, like a, a simple queue service queue or something, right? So that, that context might be inferred here. And then like, if I was talking about the service Amazon queue, then further down, if I say queue, like, you know, an hour later, that context might be enough for it to be like, oh, it means the letter Q. 
um, stuff like that. That's maybe not the best example, but some something like that, right? That it may be relevant to kind of have the the whole the ability to carry context through, and that's not possible right now because it is processing like video file by video file. Um, so that's something where I want to have something that's going to grab all the audio outputs from the whole stream and aggregate them together, or at least like do one and then carry that context to do the next one. So it needs to do them in order uh, sequentially. So there's kind of this workflow element to that processing. Um, which is the kind of thing as I've been thinking about using services like step functions that are really nice. It's kind of a flexible way of integrating things. Like we can have a batch job uh, or maybe a Lambda, depending on how long it takes to do the work that goes and does the uh, transcription. But in the workflow, we can like pick up one file, do it, and then carry on the context to the next invocation. Something like that, if we want to do things that way. There's some possibilities. There's some possibilities. This is kind of a, let's see, I'm gonna look at this. All, all sorts of nice little uh, examples here of doing various things with step functions, right? So tune a machine learning, uh, machine learning model, train a machine learning model, task timer, selective checkpointing, Your batch job. So, just like what? So we potentially can, you know, call to AWS batch from the step function. Okay. So anyway, um, oh, this is this is not the thing I wanted to go to. I have a diagram somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, it's on another. Uh, it's over here. Got a flow chart. Uh, so we we are kind of are in architecture land here, <laughs> and and uh, workflow use case kind of land here. Uh, so this is kind of capturing what I want to. I probably need to zoom in. Screen, don't I? There we go. So there's stuff that even the existing glowing Telegram project doesn't do right now, right? Where what I ultimately want to do and where stuff like that Lambda function that's going to call Twitch's API to set the stream title comes in, it's here at the beginning of this workflow. This is ultimately what I want to do with this program is I, I want to make it so that the whole streaming process is owned by this tool um, in terms of like man getting like metadata and tags and stream categories all the way through to posting on YouTube. Uh, and then probably would need some integration with OBS at some point, um, which I have done some of. Um, and some of the things I wanna do with like my, um, some of my screens in OBS, and some of the things that I have inside of OBS for uh, integrating with that, rolling into this tool. Um, but this is where we start talking about like what it does today, right? So we're um, identifying local recordings, not necessarily pulling stats from Twitch, but identifying local recordings, extracting video metadata uh, and preview images is now something we're doing in, in AWS. Um, and save stream recording metadata session for later review. Um, so we have some of that, not all of it, because we're not we're not capturing the stats yet. And then present metadata for review, and proceed with image and, uh, with ingestion and analysis. This is the part where I need a UI, right? That is going to integrate with what we're storing in AWS. Um, here, the idea was then we have kind of this highlighting and analysis stage where we do silence detection, transcription. Uh, frame previews and uh, transcription analysis. So some of this is gonna move earlier, right? So we've already gotten the frame previews. Um, and I think I wanna move the silence detection as well to happen as part of this step so that we have that 
um, already. Now, why... Why did I want this stage? I think my thinking here was that I wanted to bet maybe some of the details of the stream. Because potentially, uh, especially the transcription and the analysis of the transcription would be fed metadata about the stream, like the stream category and tags. And so you'd want to double check all that before proceeding. Um, but the silence detection itself doesn't, it's, it's fairly straightforward, right? Because it's just looking at audio levels on a predefined track. I don't know that that part needs to wait or the frame previews don't need to wait either, right? Because we're just pulling keyframes from the video. So I think that part will probably, we'll move that up. So, uh, a little note. So, video metadata, uh, keyframes, silence detection. So this becomes. Just transcription and analysis. So I think that makes sense. And then we want to you know, have some kind of notice that this, this is complete and it's ready to be reviewed. And then the big thing is to look and edit and select based on the, all of this data. Um, which is a, a side project that I, that I have not shown off yet, but some UI work that I've been doing uh, for kind of a cohesive, like um, single panel editor um, selector reviewer thing, right? Uh, and this is where I introduce some technology, uh, some terminology rather, uh, where we have like, here's the project level, right? So here is the, we're looking at essentially the whole stream. And then we need to, from once we select the bits that are interesting, <laughs> essentially, uh, then we break that, that out into, uh, into episodes where we're, we're taking the selection of things from the project level and exporting episodes. Um, and that, then ties into what this diagram is about, kind of representing what things are and what things are composed of, right? So I want to have this idea of a series. So a series is like um, it effectively, it, it represents a couple of things to me, right? So I have a playlist on YouTube of the videos, right? But it's also like, I guess recently I haven't been doing it, but you know, all of this stuff about glowing telegram on Twitch, all of these streams are part of that series. All of the videos coming out from that go into that one playlist on YouTube. That that is encapsulated by this idea of a series, right? And the idea is that potentially we can um, use information about all of the videos that are associated with the series to build out kind of a memory of what is going on to use for for our LLM kind of analysis and workflow uh, usage. So a series is composed of multiple streams and each stream has these, uh, what I'm calling today video clips, but that's kind of a misleading term. Um, these are the 20 minute segments that are recorded by OBS, although they could be coming from other places if I ever did any other kind of video recording. And Moody Abigail is here with a lurk. Hello. Thanks for the lurk. Such cool emotes you have as always. And so, you know, bringing in these, these media, media files, you know, a stream will have a half a dozen or more of them. Um, these are those Matroska um, video and audio 
containers, right? And then, you know, so data analysis happens at the level of each video clip. So this is the thing that I've been showing, like when, in AWS Batch, when we get each media file, each video clip, we're doing kind of the analysis of, um, or the, the data gathering, the extraction of data from each file separately. Um, and then what we want to do is eventually be able to use the context of the, str the stream and then the overall series. Um, and then that analysis needs to happen serially over each clip to carry the context from the preceding ones, right? So that's where it gets kind of more involved where we can't just like, oh, here's a single file, analyze it. And then what we do is we say, okay, um, today I always, I'm always saying um, the project that I break episodes out of is composed only of the media from an individual stream. I do want to model this in a way where we break that up, where potentially a project will be associated to a series. This line should be different to kind of encapsulate that. Uh, let's see. Green. There you go. It's a little different. Um, so it's associated with the series and it's associated with these video clips, these media files. And they might be for multiple series, right? And then we might pull an episode from a project or multiple episodes, likely multiple. Uh, and so having that flexibility of like, oh, I have this interesting thing that I'm saying from one stream. And then actually the other relevant parts are from this following stream, right? Now I pull those things together. And I actually want to put the, those things into an episode it might make sense for like something more edited than what I'm doing today, right? That's what I'm driving towards is the ability to make, um, to keep the stream VODs where I'm doing like chunking up the stream and putting that out into the VODs channel, but also to do more edited content where we're condensing uh, relevant things about a topic into a single video. Um, and then you know, we can have project level settings from the series level, which link to maybe we have a special intro or outro uh, or other information that we want to incorporate into the outputted episode, right? And we would render this episode out and get it uploaded. Uh, so that that is that's that's the project, right? This, this kind of represents what I'm trying to do. Um, and I, I think earlier I already convinced myself I want to move the silence detection up into the, the batch job we're doing now. And then I think after that, um, what we can do is we can look at doing the transcription and analysis work. Um, and I think what we'll do here is we'll probably do, let me make some boxes here. Actually, I have Um, these things definitely will be AWS batch jobs um, because we're going to have to pull in those files and then we're going to need GPU to do, ooh, actually, yes. I mean, potentially if I wanted to move, like have my own LLM um, model for this work, um, it would make sense for both of these activities to be batch in AWS Batch because I can provision a compute environment that uses that has GPU. But what I will likely do, uh, do we have a nice, let me see this thing. Uh, so we'll do, this is, this is gonna be a transcription with opening, opening AI Whisper. Um, so that, that's one part of this. And, um, so this is what I use today. And this is like a self-hosted thing. Like I have, I, I download a model. I have a model in, in the container that runs and, um, it's just all self-hosted, right? Whereas the analysis part, I'm using OpenAI's API and I'm calling out to that, to, you know, I'm shipping, um, the transcription of the video to them, to their model, and they're doing it. Um, I think at the scale that I'm working at and what I'm doing for now, 
doing those things like that makes sense. Um, it could be interesting to like make a custom model for these things and do self hosting and, and all those things. Um, so for let's see, do we have a I don't really have a good icon that I want to use here. Um, let's have a box. Um, so if we're going to continue calling OpenAI's API, that doesn't need to be like, we don't need to do that in this batch. This is something where it, it could be really nice to use a step function, right? It's going to do this work where we're going to submit a batch job. And we're going to wait for it to complete. And then we're going to call an API potentially just like using this, right? So we can call third party API. Um, with the Emmet Bridge connection resource. That's interesting. So we could do that or it could be a Lambda function. We'll see. We're, we're a ways from that. But doing something like that, kind of uh, orchestrating those things that happen together could be good. Um, I have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. Let's see what, what's going to make sense. I think potentially an issue there is there are limits to how much data you can pass um, directly through the state in the step function, right? So like if, well, the batch job is not going to be able to return any data anyway. Um, likely what it's going to do is it's going to store the transcript in DynamoDB. And then we would what have to get item from DynamoDB. And then potentially the output of that would be in this in the state that flows into this, and then we can pass that through. Um, but the question is going to be, forget, that's the uh, maybe that's that function. Max um, payload size. All data you load into your state machine and pass across transitions must be smaller to 256 KB at all times. Um, so 256,000, let's say, letters. Um, I don't know. Um, like, if we look at... Oh, there's not a good way for me to get... So here's an example of, like, three hours of words, right? How many, how many bytes is that? Now, get off. Yeah, whatever. Uh, it's all temporary UI. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, let's see. Right, so we got all on one line, and then. The length of this line is so 84 KB. All right, so if we go back to the docs that I was just on. Or did I close it? There it is. Uh, so, I mean, we have some margin. So potentially, yeah, and this is the this is always the thing using AWS services you want to look at. It's like service quotas, right? Uh, some of these things can be increased, some cannot. Uh, state machine definitions, maximum request size. So this is one megabyte per request, total data size per step function in your request. And that is, you know, so that's not increasable. Um, uh, I don't know that that's the same thing as the other thing we're looking at, though. Execution time, idle timeout, history of retention, retrievable period. Uh, maximum polars, maximum input or output size for a task state or execution. 256 kilobytes as UTF-8 encoded string. 
for standard. Same for express though. Um, so potentially we could have the data coming out of DynamoDB directly into the state machine's state and then to our API call. Um, alternatively, yeah, I don't know. Do not know. Um, one, one issue like I know uh, that we have is that the three hours of transcription is too much for at least last time I checked, it was too much for the um, the evaluation, the, the token size, token limit, whatever for for um, GPT 4.0, I think. So that's why the process now is like I cut the things into episodes and then I do transcription on like an hour segment. I don't want to necessarily do that with this. So that'll be interesting. Well, we'll have to probably, we'll, we'll do the, uh, the, the speech to text and then we'll have to like build, um, like we'll have to take a piece and send it to OpenAI and get feedback, like summarize this part of the video and then carry through that summary to the next call and just like carry through context that way maybe or something, something where we potentially wouldn't grab the whole uh, transcript in one go anyway. And that would make this doing this directly more feasible versus something where we are, um, the, the other way of doing this, right, is that we we're already storing the result of our uh, speech to text somewhere, maybe DynamoDB is all theoretical we're thinking through how this could work right um so if i just have a lambda here the lambda could read the data out of dynamodb and then make the abi call and that would just be a box right you lose a bit of flexibility there in terms of like being able to plug things in here if your a lot of your different units of functionality are, are blended together into one uh, thing but uh, sometimes this is what you have to do if you're trying to accommodate limits here. Okay, so we've spent an hour thinking through this and catching up. And uh, I think we have, I, I, I feel like I have a good sense of what I wanna do next though. So the first thing will be taking our existing batch job and adding the, the silence detection to it. And then we can swing back and set up a job that does the transcription. Um, and we can test that out. And that may take the rest of the time I have for the stream today. And if not, we can start looking at maybe provisioning a step function um, and trying out that API call stuff and see if we can make it call uh, OpenAI's API. I don't know, we might just do a Lambda. That might be easier. We'll see. Uh, but just basically implementing these bits and pieces that we need, uh, and then then we'll have to integrate everything. <laughs> you know, uh, what some might think of as the easy part, but probably the harder part, right? It's like, now we gotta combine everything together into a working application again. Uh, but I think this will have a lot more flexibility than, um, what we're doing today and it's going to move the compute off of my local machine um, and let us leverage a bunch of the different AWS services that are out there because there are so, so many. <laughs> Some actually useful. Uh, various kinds of databases, machine learning options. In fact, if you're asking, why am I not using Amazon Transcribe? At least for my use case, uh, just running a AWS batch job uh, seems more cost effective. Same thing with like extracting audio versus using something like um, these services, these media convert services. Uh, at my scale, it, it's a trade off, right? It's like I have to manage setting up the, I have to write code and I have to manage these jobs to do the work. Um, but then I'm paying less per you know, hour of media I'm processing. Uh, 
to the point where it's 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 hardly anything. All right, so we can take a break here. I'll be back in a couple of minutes after I get some more water and uh, we'll uh, maybe actually do like write some code. All right, here we go. 